Hi everyone! Welcome to Acrylics for our 2020 class. Um, and I am Mrs. Wendell. So I'm just going to walk you through what our first parts and steps that we're going to cover in class are. Um, first of all, we're just going to do a simple color wheel. And if you are at home, um, either taking the class from home or if you just weren't able to show up today because you're ill or whatever, um, I'm just going to walk you through some steps. So all I did is I've made a, a loose sketch of a color wheel. So you could just take a plate um, and uh, trace it around on your canvas. Um, this, this is just like 11 by 14 um, and I just did the cheap board one because we're just doing a color wheel that we're going to refer back to. And so I did it low to the canvas because I, I did a line up here because up here I'm going to show you how to mix uh, neutral tones. Um, but here we go. You just trace this with your pencil, um, which I've already done. Uh, you'll take your ruler. You're going to draw six uh, fairly even lines. They end up being about two to two and a half inches. You know, so if you just kind of gauge it around. And then what you do is you go, you can label this either red or magenta. Um, you can go over here, you know, like skip one, go over here, just throw a little O for orange, skip one, come over here, do your Y for yellow, skip one, write G for green, skip one, write B for blue, skip one, write purple. And you'll see what we're doing with it. And some of you already know how to do a color wheel. You've had me before, or other art teachers. Um, but we're just gonna do this, we're gonna mix around, but we're gonna cover how to lighten and darken a shade. And we're gonna do it in the simple way with just using white and black today. And then um, up here, I'll show you how to do it using your colors, your primary colors. And um, if you look in your haiku lesson, I left you a bunch of information and some articles you can read about uh, primary colors. As we go through the class, you'll learn a lot more about color theory. You'll learn about the battle between the cyan, magenta, blue, and uh, I mean cyan, magenta, yellow, and the red, blue, yellow debate, and about subtractive and additive color mixing. So you'll learn about it. I'm not going to cover it right now. We're just going to make our color wheel. All right. Also, real quick, these are different brush shapes. So this is a round, this is your flat, this is your angled, and this is like a filbert right here. So you just pick one of these, whichever one's gonna be easier for you. And um, we're just gonna lay in our color. Let me start with this filbert. And my brushes, I already pre-wet them in some water, um, just because you always wanna get them pre-wet in the water first if you don't, and you go straight to your paint. Um, and work that paint in it'll get caught and if you've ever had this happen before but your brush will get built up with the paint inside um, especially up here near the ferrule this is the ferrule and uh, and then it gets stiff and it's hard to wash out and it just kind of wrecks your brush quicker so um, in order to not wreck our brushes we're gonna get them wet first um, if you open a new pack of brushes and they're stiff you can run them under some uh, lukewarm water and start to work the glue it's like a a glue that they kind of put on just to like keep the brushes shape until um, you're ready to use them and um, so you just kind of work that off with your water if you're in my class we do that in watercolors um, and you get it and then if you have any shedding you can kind of like pull on your brush like this to try to help any shedding of the bristles to happen before you hit your paint your canvas or your watercolor paper whatever you're doing um, so you just work that out if you see you have any like stray hairs um, then normally what I do is I trim those all right so let's get started here's the other thing you need to do um, we'll have palettes in class but I'm just gonna use a plate and that works too so if you're at home you can always use a plate and you want a misting spray bottle you don't want the kind that um, leaves big droplets or a stream you need the misting one and that's just how you keep your your paints wet but we're actually gonna have stay wet palettes in class um, so you can take them home and bring them back and they're pretty awesome as long as we take good care of them All right, so let's get started Here we go. So I don't want my brush too wet um, We're gonna cover about when you get your paint too wet in acrylics It'll break the acrylic down. So we don't want to do that So you always want to make sure it's just a 30% ratio no more of water um, You don't you don't even have to use that much water. It's just something so then we're gonna just lay down now what I'm using is more like the primary of a magenta color so I don't know if you guys can tell in the actual video um, and I'm gonna lay it down on this whole section I'm not gonna be super concerned about keeping that edge because we're gonna go over it um, but I'm laying down that red 
All right, and then about right here, I'm not gonna go all the way. I'm gonna stop. And you'll see why in a sec. Because we're not just gonna do the color mixing this way, we're gonna do some of the color mixing up and down. All right, so I'm gonna, since I'm still using that, I'm just gonna switch over to my to a smaller brush. One of my other brushes, a Filbert, again. You can probably see the shape better over that. And I'm gonna actually grab some white. All right, work it into the brush. And I'm actually gonna come down from the bottom, right here where it meets at that point, and then I'm gonna push up into my, my red. I'm just gonna slowly let that start to work itself in. Going back and forth, back and forth. Now I'm not touching back down here because I want that to stay light. Okay. Scrape off some of this white and keep blending. Now, as you guys see, normally you wouldn't blend this way, honestly. There's a video I'll show you and I'll talk about why not to do this. But right now, I'm just trying to work it in a small section. So, whatever way works best for you right now. We are not stressing. This is a color wheel. Alright, so you're seeing that the color is changing as I get down and um, wipe some of that paint off bring my white up a little higher again here's the other thing I don't want you guys to do if you are painting with acrylics we had this happen in another class um, we had some kids that would not grab enough paint and so their canvas looked like, if you guys can see, let me zoom in. You guys can see this little edge here where you can see the canvas poking through. It's kind of scraggly on that edge. Let's see, i get a little closer. All right, there you go. You can see right in there, it's kind of scraggly. And that means I didn't get enough paint right there. I'm not worried about it because I'm actually going to lay in another, another blend over there. But if it's looking like that on your center section, you need more paint. So it's okay. This is our time to... Uh, hit that paint up so all right I'm just gonna finish up blending with my light here again that's super concerned now here's what happens when I get up here to I'm gonna skip an area because I want to leave some of it with the pure pigment right all right now, I'm gonna... now what's one of the number one rules Mrs. Wendler has and that is you wash off your brush, but you do not leave it in the water, right? All right, I'm gonna come back in with my red, make sure it's nice and thick and still wet. If it's dried, this neck you won't work when you bring in your black, right? So, bring in my my red or my magenta again. This is more like a cherry blue toned red, more like a magenta. Okay, and now I'm gonna go grab some black. And I'm going to work that in down. So I'm going to put some black across this edge here, the top. Now, black is very pigmented and very strong. I think this is actually a Mars black, which is even worse than ivory black. Ivory black is a little bit better on blending. It's got slightly more translucence. I'm going to pick up some more red. Now I'm going to start blending. Now, when I start getting really strict after we've really gotten into color theory, you're not going to be able to do the black thing as much. We will use lots of white. Um, it's not the same as watercolor, so you really do have to use white paint this time because we're in more of an opaque land. They call acrylics translucent, but they're not translucent in the sense that we get with the uh, with the uh, watercolors. So if you're coming from watercolors, just know. It's not going to be the same. That's why I'm going to let you get away with using black today. And just blend this in. And again, you see I'm leaving that middle section of the pure red. I'm not going to lose that because I want to keep that. Right? If you get too much water on your brush also, you will lose some of your 
it'll kind of lift up some of the paint off of your canvas. Now what I'm doing constantly over here is once I wash the brush off in the water, I am blotting it off on some paper towel or you can use a sponge. Um, and if you don't do that, it's just not going to work as good. But if you don't do that again, you're going to lift the paint right back up off the canvas and it won't be thick anymore. Alright. That's kind of what's happening. Alright, I'm going to leave it. Now I'm going to go up a little more. Alright, you guys, I'm not going to stress. We are not making a, a work of art right now, so I'm going to move on. Alright. Let's go to our middle section, or we're going to go all the way down to right here. Do you see this one? And we labeled it yellow. So it's one, two, three, four. Four away from where you just did your red or your magenta, whichever one you have. And I am going to fill this up. Remember, we're going to leave one section with the open. And the rest I'm going to get nice thick yellow paint and you do this again okay and you follow the same process that you just did before with darkening and lightening with the black and the white um, and so that's what you're going to do I'm actually going to leave it for a little bit because I want to just speed up I don't want to have to like have you guys watch me do each section because that's just too much video to have to watch um, so you're going to do that again here same as there I'm going to you would come in with your white and move upward doing your blending then you're going to come downward with your black and get those different tones because tones are going to be really important you're going to learn a lot about that because our first uh, project is going to be a really cool kind of forest uh, landscape monochromatic. We've done an analogous one. This time we're going to go more um, like a mono. I don't know. I'll have to show it to you, but you'll see. Alright, but what I'm going to do next is I'm actually going to come right here to this one in the middle. Okay, so you got yellow, you got this section, then we got this one. And this one I'm going to lay down in yellow all the way. And remember we're going nice and thick right because we want to cover that canvas all right and then once I do that um, I can come in and grab my other little filbert brush which is a like not a ton of red you guys because red is strong um, the magenta the red is a stronger pigment than the yellow Okay, and so I don't want to come in with too much because you, can, you can't take it away, right? You can always add more, but you can't take away. So I'm going to come in with just a little, and I want to mix it in to the whole thing. I'm just going to mix straight up on the canvas. Um, you guys will learn both like mixing on the canvas, and then you'll also mix um, on your palette, which is why you guys are supposed to have those, um, either a palette knife or get a putty knife, I think, was on the list. So... All right, we got a nice orange coming out here. So that's kind of fun, huh? And then what I would do is once I get my orange all pretty much even and mixed in the same color, um, then I would come back in again with the white and the black, just like I did over here with the magenta. Every single section will get that same treatment. All right. So that's my orange. Now what I can also do is what you would do here is I would take or here like let's just take my orange over here that I've already started. I'll take a little more run. I drop in some yellow because I'm mixing on the canvas. Now if it's closer to the red what do you guys think? Is this going to be a darker or a lighter orange? should be darker. It should be more red. So this section right here is actually going to end up being my red orange. And then this section will be my yellow orange. Currently it's lighter. It's backwards. So what do you guys think I should add? Red. You're right. 
So here we come in with my primary red. There we go. I can get a nice deep, deep red orange. It's really pretty. I am digging it. Again, it's okay. You know, you're not having to have perfection. This is like a quick color wheel that we can glance back on, see what we're supposed to do. Okay, so this one's gonna be deeper. This one's gonna be lighter. So I'm gonna scrape off some of this deep orange. And grab more of my handy dandy yellow over here and just kind of drop it in. And we'll make our yellow orange. This whole exercise, even though for some of you, you'll like it, some of you, you might be bored because you're not actually creating a painting today, but color mixing is really important and also blending is really important. So it's good for you to um, do this over and over again because you're going to get used, more used to creating the right colors that you want, but also you're going to get better and better with each section that you do with your blending skills so that your paintings look um, more cohesive unless you're gonna do something like expressionistic or um, get into fauvism stuff like that so and you guys will learn about that this year but right now we're just gonna practice on this I really gotta wash this brush off I got some serious amounts of color in there come over sorry won't you Use that paper towel, y'all. All right, so this one's gonna be, this would be green, our main green. I've got the little G right there. So I am coming in with my yellow first because again, yellow is not as strong of a pigment as the uh, blue. So it's the same problem we have with the magenta or the red being stronger, the blue is also stronger. So the first thing I'm gonna come in with is a nice healthy chunk of yellow. Okay. And I'm using multiple brushes, it just kind of keeps it quicker. I wouldn't say that you always want to just leave brushes with paint on them, but we're moving quick. So, we'll be alright. And technically, at this point, I'll just do this. I'm going to grab some blue. And again, we can always add more, but we can't take it away. So, not too much blue to make my first pure green. Right? And I'm going to start blending. That's a nice primary blue. Um, it depends on your sets. A lot of sets for primary blue, they might use the um, ultramarine is typically what they'll use. And that was more of the original color of the painters, the classic painters, was using ultramarine. And um, but the, it just depends on the person too, like what you want to use. So some people tend towards phthalo blue. I like phthalo blue a lot. It kind of depends though. Like if I'm painting in watercolor, phthalo blue is like one of my rock solid colors. And uh, But I do like ultramarine too. But I know a lot of people that love ultramarine over phthalo blue. Everybody's got their thing. All right, so I have that pretty well blended. I think I want to make it just a wee bit deeper since it's my main green. Yeah. It's a little better. I think they call this like a Kelly green or grass green. Also, if you're switching up on brushes, this is kind of fun. You'll kind of figure out which brushes you know how to control easier. Okay, and so again, you would come back, you would bring in your black and your white, and you'd blend, right? Um, but for time purposes, I'm just going to finish up these colors. All right, so now I'm going to come in with yellow. Making sure my yellow's clean. This is going to be my yellow green. And this would be my darker blue green. So more yellow over here. And just for the sake of it, let's do some misting. 
with our uh, spray bottle, keep our paints wet. Now when you do this, we will be applying your dark and your light immediately each section. Because if you can tell, like this is already starting to dry. So I don't want that to happen to you in class because then you can't blend your white and your black in once it's dry. But what I'll do is I'll go back and add more paint and do more. But we don't want to waste paint in class. So here we go. There we go. Alright, time to do some blue blends. So I'm going to take this brush straight back over. This is going to be my yellow green, so I want it to be lighter. So I'm just going to blend. I'm going to say hi, Ella. Nope, she says no. She's just going to observe. All right, you guys. You get the idea? I hope you do. Alright. And now to this section, I'm going to go scoop up a nice chunk of blue. Remember, you can be a nice deep, deep green. Make it more like a phthalo. I get to do my blue. So I'm going to clean off the brush real good. Alright, dry it off a little bit. Go grab some pure blue and lay it down. accidentally picked up some, so I'm going to definitely go over here and wipe it off. Picked up green or yellow? Yeah, I picked up the green. Ah. I'm going to try to go slower and care more careful over here. So I can class to be slower and not super fast. I love There you know. Alright, then I'm going to move some pigment over this way. Um, I'm going to go right here, but we are going to not start with our blue. Blue is stronger than the magenta. So, we're going to come back to our magenta, and you see right here where we made a P for our purple. We're going to lay down a healthy chunk of the magenta, nice and thick, first. Because it is not as strong as that blue. That blue is going to be the strongest one of the primaries really affects everything if it's overpowered so it's just what you got to remember yellow is the least then magenta then the blue all right but I want this to be purple so now I get to go blend so I'm gonna make sure my brush doesn't have any not too much and I can start bringing it in and then you know what I'm gonna do on this that I didn't do on the other ones, but it's only because it always works better if I do it in the purple section. Purple is a hard color to mix with acrylics. Um, I feel like it's easier to do with watercolors because of their translucency. Um, but with acrylics, it seems like in order to see how pretty the purple really is, you need to um, be able to so drop a little bit more magenta in there. I need to be able to add some white, so I will on this one, since we're almost done and you're getting the idea anyway, I am going to go back in and blend up and down with the white and the black. Alright, now I'll come in with the white.
white first up from the center. Honestly, we could just put a huge dab of white and just go up. <laughs> kind of see that purple a little bit better. And I think it's pretty. This will also help you see like, you know, could I add more blue to this? Is it a little too, uh, got too much pink to it? I mean, I think honestly it might that purple tone down a little bit. Start up at the top again so I don't end up with, and I'll come down to the white to get my next mid tone. Like I am switching between the brushes. <laughs> this is so messy. I'm just gonna kick my OCD off, but I'll deal, y'all deal. All right, time to grab a little bit of black. And again, we talked about it. This is Mars Black that I'm using, so it's super strong. So I don't need a ton of it. I'm gonna drop it in from the edge. So you see the purple. So obviously what you're going to continue to do is you would continue to go all the way around your circle um, right here. Um, when I start out, I'm going to start both times with magenta. So you'll start in with some magenta here and over here. This is close to the red or the magenta. So it's going to be a more red tone purple. And then this, so I'm really going to throw in a lot more of this magenta. And then when I'm coming in on this one, um, I don't need as much. It's gonna be my blue toned purple. So same thing you've been doing. You're making your red toned orange, your yellow toned orange, your yellow green, your blue green, you know, stuff like that. So you just do that, but you're gonna go slower in class. We're gonna go slower because we're gonna each section blend up with white, blend down with black. All right, you guys, that's how you're gonna make your color wheel. Um, the next time we do this, um, we will come in and also be adding in um, a section up here across the top, and we'll be blending in with neutral tones. We will not be using any black then. We'll just be straight up using the primaries and creating grays and browns and other shades um, that we're gonna not miss, you know, we're not gonna have in this section. So I'm gonna let you guys go, and I hope you guys have a good week. I hope everyone ends up making it to class this week. If you're at home, hi. Hope you're doing well. Have a sunny week. Remember, happy accidents. This is just a color wheel. We're just having fun, okay? And guess what? You will get paint on your hands. And you should probably make sure you have your apron on. Like, I don't have my apron on right now, and I probably should. Because, as you can see, I always end up with paint on my hands. So, happy, happy day. Have fun. Have it be colorful. Take care.